Hey, everybody, this is Perch. Um, you know, there's this video that's been going around social media, and a lot of people commented on it already. And it's not that it's not news, but by and large, it's not new news. And in it, a retailer is basically saying, hey, a lot of these books aren't selling. And uh, the response to it is, again, not new news either. The response to it was a number of comic readers, Dottie Cates, Jamal Igel, you know, et cetera, um, all went at this retailer of being, you know, fat, lazy, stupid, white, dumb, you know, bad at their job, can't run a shop, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. A couple of people, uh, Mark, Mark Millar, uh, Gail Simone, others uh, did the, hey, wait a minute, you know, we probably should listen to retailers. And, and like any bit of customer feedback, if you forget about comics for a moment, think about your own job or what you're doing. Um, if you're selling a product or you're working in a field, you get feedback. And the feedback that you get is not 100% right. It's not 100% actionable. It's not like you just, you know, sit there and somebody tells you, you know, this product needs to be green, so make it green. You're like, okay, thank you. That's the missing element. I'll make it green now. It's not like that. The, the whole reason why you have, you know, specialized roles and people in companies who, uh, who kind of listen to feedback, collect that feedback, understand what's actionable about it, figure out what exactly people want, and then deliver. But, but you have to have your ears open, your mouth shut. You listen. You then figure out what insights you're hearing from that feedback. You also figure out what questions to ask. You know, I think uh, if you're going in and, and any kind of product, you're trying to solicit feedback, you have to make sure you're asking, you know, things that the person may not be thinking of. Does this product come out enough? Is it packaged well? Is the price point right? What do you think about the marketing? The person you're talking to giving you the feedback may, may really be fixated on one particular element. It's important to kind of suss that stuff out. That's how it works. Um, but you know, this has become a game uh, and not an exciting game and certainly not a new game of somebody complains, there's a dog pile. Somebody complains, there's a dog pile and on it goes. It's because a lot of the people playing the game, in this case, the, you know, this retailer comes out and complains and says there's problems. And there's a couple choices that could be made. A lot of like, if you're Dottie Cates, you could just ignore, you know, this retailer's comment, and you disagree with it. I disagree with stuff on a regular basis all over the place. I don't feel compelled to respond to all of it. That would be crazy. So if you're Donnie Cates, you know, and you're just worried about, you know, not passing out, uh, then, you know, why, why respond at all? Why get in there and like, I think I'll call this retailer a dickhead. <clears throat> sure. Uh, but there's no, there's no point to it. It's a useless game. There's no win. There's no dunking on the retailer is going to get you more fame, more publicity. You know, a couple of your uh, your friends may uh, chortle and patch up like, yeah, yeah, you show them. And I think where Donnie is concerned, it seems uh, fairly clear he's trying to kind of work his way back in the industry after torching every bridge he can around him and pretty much screwing a bunch of people who really tried to help him out. And there are some people who really tried to help him out that he basically, uh, you know, vomited on. Actually, that probably literally, uh, but you know, it is, so now it's it's the you know how do you get back uh, in the good graces of people in the comic industry? Well, I guess I guess in 2023 you dunk on the retailers and dumb chuds. I, I guess that's what you do. I, I have a hard time believing there's any lasting value to that. Even if you get a couple of your, you know, I mean, even even if Jamal Eigel, for example, is like, oh yeah, man, you did that. What a great burn, sick burn, bro. Pat him, pat pat you on the back for that one. Okay, and then what happens? Does, does Jamal have some giant secret, you know, cache of money that, you know, he can whip out and start paying you with? Is there, are there comics that uh, that he's doing that you can get involved? Like what? What other than a pat on the back? Well, you go, bro. Like what? What? What has happened? Oh yeah, so that was the uh, the radio in my car. I turned on my car, and. Uh, slapped onto like a very weird anyway thank you kid craddock morning show um sorry about that little eh, that that's the fun of the perch shows you get these weird little interruptions anyway but the point is i, I guess i don't the, the game has no use it's fun for some people to play if you're on youtube maybe you can monetize it if you have a channel with uh you know and you could do streams talking about it there's a little bit of money that can come out there but but from the perspective of the comic industry the thing gets said a lot of like, well, these people are just playing to their buddies to, you know, to get in the good graces of the of the people who control comics. Yeah, except the people who control comics don't actually control any wealth in comics. It's a shrinking market. So what what have you actually gained? 
I, I mean, I, friendship, buddies. I, I'm not. I there, what what was the victory? But one of the things that this comic retailer said that I think is uh, is slightly incorrect. It's almost correct, but it's slightly incorrect. But something that a number of people jumped on, and I think it's the reason why uh, Kate's uh, jumped on it, is basically, I'm, I'm paraphrasing here, the retailer said a lot of these comics feature characters that aren't true, kind of to their original characters, but instead have become self-inserts for the writer. And, uh, ba- you know, basically what the, re- the retailer is saying is like Captain America has a, you know, a way he is, has been established for decades. And now the uh, the person writing Captain America is basically putting their own you know politics, their own voice, their own their own life into the character versus writing a accurate Captain America or Thor or Iron Man or Batman or whoever it might be that the character no longer sounds like the original, instead sounds like some you know sounds like the writer. And here's here's where I'll disagree. Um, I think that the writers are trying, are you know, are you know, caring less for what these characters should be. You know, they are like, you know, the person who comes on to, you know, Batman. I think cares a lot less about the legacy of Batman, the personality of Batman, and I think the writer is trying to make Batman into the person they want to be, not the person they are. Because if you notice with a lot of these uh, characters, and you see this in. Like, like Captain Marvel has been a classic example of this in how it's been written. The, the character of Captain Marvel felt like some fantasy idealized version of what Kelly Thompson wanted her life to be like. It's not what Kelly Thompson's life is actually like. And the thing that kind of always makes me chuckle, cringe, I don't know what the right answer is there, but, but always uh, is funny about this stuff, is I'll hear videos and I'll hear people saying, you know, oh, this character is a self-insert. But I've met that writer. I've met that creator at a con. I've, I've talked to that creator. That creator's life is very dull. And uh, granted, the, you know, the superhero, the character in the comic book is not exactly super exciting either. But, but still, this, uh, this, the self-insert is a self-idealized insert. It's that extra word of just clarity. And I think as a result... If you remember the very old uh, Simpsons cartoon where you introduced... Uh, what is it? Poochie? Is like the cool skateboarding dog. It was uh, this was like the the height of cool and everything else. The problem with these self idealized inserts when they come from the writers is that they they feel like just these these weird wish fantasies of what they want their life to be. It has no real authenticity, even when it's original character. It's even worse when it's applied to an existing character. So you know it, it's and I've said this before. It's it, it's the idea of writing you know, to, to be, uh, evergreen is the statement that, you know, when you write a comic, if you're joking about something you just saw on TikTok and you insert that into the comic, there's a strong likelihood that by the time the comic is printed, put in the store out in people's hands, that meme or that TikTok video is either so old and tired that it's a grown moment instead of the kind of, instead of being cool, or nobody noticed in the first place and it just comes off as weird and odd. The uh, Fire and Ice book going on right now by DC is thoroughly weird in that there are references in that thing that are dated as hell. Like, they, they feel, you know, t- a decade off. It's like if you're making a joke right now about uh, Vanilla Ice, like, you are roughly 30 years late with that joke. Like it, it is, it is not, it is not a funny gag. And I think a lot of, uh, pop culture and a lot of things that, uh, that, you, you know, people get on Twitter was well, there's the, uh, the meme that went around for a while of the guy who was holding the hands of his girlfriend, but then he was turning his head to look back at another girl that was prettier or whatever. And that meme had its day had several days is very popular, but if it shows up in a, in a comic book in 2023, it's grown inducing. And so, you know, when uh, the the retailer here said there's too many self insert characters, there's there's I get the point, and so I'm not I'm not going ah this retailer's stupid. I'm not certainly doing that. But what I am saying is that the issue is not necessarily a self insert; it's a self wished 
they were. It's a wish they were self insert, which is somehow much worse. I, I mean, it it's somehow far more pathetic when the character, or the 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 thing that's being inserted is this fantasy of the writer that they're living out in the comic book. It's the what's the uh, the line that's uh, you know in tonight's episode the writer's barely disguised fetish. That's how some of this stuff, this the the quote unquote self inserts come across. It's you know the uh, this character is the the you know, the deep secret desire of what this creator would like to be, but written in a poochie from the Simpsons like way, where it's just sad. And that combined with a legacy character, a character that has an established personality, it's painful. It's painful to read. It's uh, it takes the characters right out of the moment. It doesn't sound authentic at all. And again, these jokes, which may be funny in the writer's head, in say January, when the comic actually sees print and and goes out into the into somebody's hands in August, it's just awful. Once upon a time, editor safeguarded this because it was uh, it was bad. I mean, it just you know this was the kind of stuff that that hurt comics. Today, though, it's just all the floodgates are open. So anyway, that there's a lot more takes that you can have on this thing. This controversy is retailer going around the fighting, and it's absolutely disgusting the way people are dogpiling it. Whether you agree or not, you don't dogpile the person who's selling your product. That's just dumb. Of course, you know, to a lot of the creators doing it, they would argue it's not my product. You know, I work for Marvel. Marvel's a customer. I, I'm I'm free and clear. Literally, there's, that's some of the examples people have been using. Of uh, you know, I'm I'm a freelance creator, so what do I care? Yeah, I mean, you you are burning down your house, but whatever you say. Anyway, I that that part's disgusting. But keep in mind, it's not a self insert. It's a wished it was my self insert. <laughs> Goddamn, that's worse. Thanks for listening. 